Thanks, Greg, for kind of taking me through some of this, it's how CSDM works with uh, change. We haven't caught up in a while, and I know you've uh, been working pretty diligently on improving how change management works and, and plus how it supports CSDM. Yeah, absolutely. CSDM has been a really great addition to what we're doing at ServiceNow, but in change management, we've been able to take advantage of it in a couple different areas. One is we now have a change group. So if that change group is populated and you don't already have an assignment group set, it will auto-populate that assignment group. But what's really a cool feature that we um, developed back in, I think it was San Diego, was the addition of dynamic CI groups. So dynamic CI groups is part of what you guys did, Mark, as part of the CSDM, CMDB solution. And we just took advantage of it inside change. So that's kind of yeah. the uh, background on it. Yeah, I mean, well, I know when we came out with it, it was um, it got a lot of interest, and of course, customers wanted to use it in very new, other interesting ways that we hadn't really planned on at the time. So uh, we can appreciate you you got you know accommodating it in their roadmap and getting it in there. Yeah, so this is a um, one of the reasons Dynamic CI Groups is really interesting for change customers is because. As you probably can imagine, there's this unique need sometimes to do a logical grouping of CIs so that you can treat them like a service and run a change request against them. Um, yeah. it could, you know, some of the use cases that I typically share with customers are it could be like a, a campus move from one location to another, or it could be a set of, you know, servers that you're patching that maybe span different classes. And you can yeah. create these dynamic CI groups and essentially you treat them as though they're a configuration item or a service. And mm -hmm. what's really cool about this for us, uh, Mark, and for our customers is that when you have a dynamic CI group, what we're actually doing with that is we'll add it to the affected CIs list. So here you can see I have Lexington Avenue campus. Yeah. Um, and I'm saving this record. And what it's going to do is drop that dynamic CI group down in the affected CIs list. So you might be wondering, well, why is that important to customers? But the reason it's really cool is a couple things. One is we unpack that dynamic CI group down here when it, we put it into the affected CIs list. So the reason that's pretty cool to customers is now they can groom this list. So if they wanna say, yeah, it's, it's all of these except this MacBook Pro and I wanna remove it, we can essentially remove that CI from there. Okay. So and after you've unpacked the dynamic CI group, because it, ha it picked up that particular item in, in as part of the query or part of the group, but exactly. you just threw it out after unpacking it. Yeah. So it allows you to groom the list after it's mm -hmm. unpacked the dynamic CI group. Now, if you go down here and remove this actual dynamic CI group that you're seeing here, Lexington Avenue, it will remove all of the CIs associated with that. But when they're unpacked like this, you can basically you know, groom your list or massage it so that you're only targeting the CIs that you want to, even if they're rolled up into a group so you can massage okay. them. The other thing that's really cool about this for change customers is now when I do my impacted services, it's looking across all of these CIs within that dynamic CI group. So I get a true sense of what the impact is. Now, this, yeah. is, just, this is just demo data in here, so I probably won't get a lot when I do this. But essentially, since that list is unpacked in the infected CIs, then we derive impacted services based on that. Does mm. that make sense? So, yeah. So anything that got picked up in that query, you can trace it to any, I would say, related service. Is that right? Yeah, to any impacted service. So now I can see, okay, I'm going to move the Lexington Avenue campus, and I can yeah. look at all of the impacts for those, those CIs that are loaded in this dynamic CI group. Okay. Um, and it shows me the impacted services so that I know exactly what I'm dealing with. So these are really two cool capabilities, super easy to use. Um, and there's lots of kind of those one-off use cases where customers are just, you know, either trying to move something or they just need a logical grouping of CI so they can write a change request again. So yeah. incredibly yeah. powerful capability and super simple to use. Yeah. So, so a quick question on that impacted services. Is, is that following sort of the CSDM route to look at uh, kind of like the same thing that you're doing in, in uh, incident management, looking at impacted services through that? 
Yeah, exactly. We're, we're following the CSDM model to a T here. In fact, yeah. we'll all, we not only will we derive impacted services, but I think you were helping drive some of this, but we can, yeah. if there's a connection to um, impacted business applications, or I could add offerings on here as well, it will show me all of those impacted services, business applications, impacted service offerings. So you really get the full picture of what the impact is using a dynamic CI group. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, that's that's really it in a nutshell, Mark. Super easy, um, a great little tool or utility for customers to logically group CIs and write change requests against them. Okay. So so on the unpacking, the, the thing that I get questions about, well, it's a query. So what happens if the scope of the query changes? Like I added a new a thing in that gets picked up by that query on the, uh, on the live system. If it's part of the dynamic CI group? Yeah. Like, yeah. like you've done the unpacking already. Right. So, but now let's say I add a new piece of network gear that, that happens to be related to that dynamic CI group in the wild, you know, underneath the covers. Yeah. I can, you can still do that. You can still add and subtract from this list at will. It's just all that we're doing is taking this group and unpacking it in effective CIs. If I want to add some other CIs in here, I can very quickly do that. So manually, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yep. So what? But what if somebody adds a new piece of hardware that gets picked up by the group, you know, in the query that the group defines? You know what I mean? So does it? When I come back in here, will it automatically sort of appear for me, or is it something because I've unpacked it already that I have to manually add? Because it, you'd, ha you'd have to manually add it unless you yeah. unless you um, remove the dynamic CI group and then re-added it. Then you would pick up the new CIs. Okay, so basically, so when you create this change record and add and you'll pick off that dynamic CI group, that's when you do the unpacking. That, that's exactly. like your snapshot in Chime. Got it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, like there's there's all kinds of use cases around this that um, that customers take advantage of. So it's a really cool capability. Yeah, and I know like over time this has changed a little bit the behavior on how you do this unpacking. When when did you add that feature in your change management product there? I, I want to say that it was Rome when we added this in. Okay, okay. So folks that are upgrading, if they're on Rome, they'll start to see this unpacking kind of feature when dynamic CI groups are there. So. Exactly, yep. Awesome. Yeah, well, that's about it. super simple, super easy to use. Um, and it's a great little utility that customers can take advantage of. Yeah, now, now as far as like some of the impacted other things, I mean, there's nothing else the customer has to do to enable that. They just have to have those relationships set. And then when they run the impact analysis, they'll just populate those impacted items, right? Um, sort of. It, there's a couple of caveats to that. That okay. So we, we have a lot of variants, or I shouldn't say a lot of variants, but we have some variants and we control the behavior through properties. What we're doing with some of that is uh, we look at impacted services, but they have to be part of an application service in yep. order to show up on that list so that we can read the, the right list there and pull those up in terms of impacted services. So there's a few little caveats in terms of the properties and the way you set up change management, but there's a lot of flexibility in there for customers, depending on where they're at in their journey to application services or on their CSDM journey. And they, they can leverage some of these based on where they're at in that journey. Cool. And so I know a lot of customers are still kind of migrating or putting their data in the right place. This is one, uh, I would say, feature that they would be able to leverage when they establish that app service layer if they haven't used it in the past. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, the other thing that we're doing here, Mark, just a, a quick kind of plug of where we're kind of going with this, mm -hmm. not directly related to CSDM, but... Where we're moving with this is we're going to take advantage when we move to the new service operations workspace, and we'll use the new node map component to create some visualizations around these as well, so that you could see like, um, for example, you might see all affected CIs that are in this list color coded in one way, and then see impacted services color coded in another way, business applications rendered up in another way. Um, so it's very easy for customers, instead of having to go through these related lists, once we get to SOW, they can actually see real visualizations of some of these to get a better picture of what's going on with the change, even when they're using dynamic CI groups. Awesome. Yeah, I, th I think that node map is going to be very powerful. I know that that's a big collaboration between various teams here and 
no, we're, we're even trying to consolidate the node map with the uh, service mapping views, which has always been separate. There's a lot of really neat things coming. Yep, we're excited. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So you'll just pretty much add it on. I guess you're, are you also working on your new UIB version of change management? We are. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's part of the service operations workspace. And okay. it's at, change will actually release in March 22, but it'll be a pretty limited edition of change. And what I mean by that is we're going to have the ability to do change creation in the first release. So we're kind of targeting okay. that persona for a service desk or tier one agent. But we're planning to have, you know, at least the MVP of the full life cycle of change in November. Okay, cool. Yeah, so one other CSDM related question I might want to ask is, so I know we added a new change group property that gets propagated through the uh, service off, technical service offering. I don't know if, if you're familiar with that synchronization of the attributes feature that we put it put in there. Um, um, Auto populating assignment group, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it's it's for auto populating assignment group, but also for change group. There's a, a new standard property that we're we've introduced. Oh, I'm yeah, yeah. using. I am. So uh, let me see if I can just create a quick change here. Um, I'll start new, and we'll just do. Uh, uh, let's remove this, and uh, we'll do for configuration item. We'll do a database. So this one in the change group, the CI, and I can jump over and show you if you like, but basically the CI has the change group populated to say yeah. the San Diego database. So when I save this record, what it's gonna do is automatically populate that assignment group. Ah. So you see we dropped it in there. So it's a really convenient way if you're not sure what assignment group, as long as you have the right CI targeted, you know, you can basically auto populate those assignment groups. And that's really useful for like, uh, tier one agents and folks that are trying to create change requests that may or may not know all the different assignment groups that are out there. It's just a quick automation capability that really enhances the overall experience. Yeah, absolutely. And that's part of what we've been adding in terms of guidance on these groups now and how you can propagate those down into the individual CI levels. Thanks for the opportunity to show this. It's a really cool feature and I hope customers uh, take advantage of it because there's definitely those use cases that pop up where things don't feed, fit in a nice little box. And dynamic CI groups is a great way to address some of that. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate it. Um, I will definitely come back to see a little bit more detail as we continue to evolve uh, our use of CSDM across the board. Sounds good. Thanks for the time, Mark.